Every morning you are going to take eight precepts. These precepts are very important. And if you break one of the precepts, it's going to affect your meditation negatively. So you have to let me know that you broke a precept. There's not going to be any finger pointing, but you need to take the precepts again with the determination not to break a precept. The easiest precept to break, of course, is speaking. So, I would like you to not speak so much. You can talk to me don't talk to the other people around you. It is very helpful because when you start talking to other people around you, what do you begin to think about? What they said, what you said, and that turns into a hindrance. So please, let's cut down the speech as much as we possibly can. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of you have heard the instructions in the meditation, but I'm going to give them again. <laughs> I don't care how many times you've heard this, it can still be of benefit to hear it again. So don't allow your mind to wander and think about other things instead of paying attention to what's being said. This is one of the things that the Buddha taught that can lead to awakening is being very attentive to what is being said. When you practice loving-kindness meditation, you first start by sending loving and kind thoughts to yourself. You remember a time when you were happy. When that happy feeling arises, then you take that feeling and put it in the center of your chest and surround yourself with that feeling. While you're doing this, your mind can begin to think about other things. Thoughts are not the enemy. Thoughts are just thoughts, and it's okay for thoughts to arise. But as soon as you notice that your mind is distracted by a thought, please let go of that thought. The way you let go of the thought is by not keeping your attention on the thought. Now relax the tightness caused in your head by that thought. And as soon as you relax the tightness, then I want you to smile and come back to sending loving and kind thoughts to yourself. If your mind wanders 25 times in the sitting and 25 times you've noticed that and come back to your object of meditation, that is a good meditation. Bad meditation? Getting caught in the thinking. <clears throat> Not paying attention to the letting it be and relaxing and coming back to your object of meditation. So it's real important for you to begin to understand what right effort is. Now, this is part of the Eightfold Path. Right effort is 
recognizing when your mind becomes distracted and there's an unwholesome thought. What is an unwholesome thought? Any thought that you take personally. I am that. That is an unwholesome thought. Release that thought by not keeping your attention on it and relaxing. Now, you bring up a wholesome object, smile, and bring that smiling mind back to your object of meditation and repeat staying with that for as long as you can. This is called the six R's. This is going to be uh, mentioned more than a few times. Uh, don't sit with your legs crossed, please. Don't sit with your legs crossed. Now the reason I say that, if your legs are crossed, you're uh, protecting something and it is a thinking posture. So with your legs uncrossed you don't need to protect anything and your mind is more clear. This is important. When I was in Sri Lanka this year, every Sri Lankan was walking around like this. And I kept on telling them, the war is over. You don't have to protect your heart anymore. Put that down. Let that go. And they didn't like that idea. Some people got up and left the retreat because I told them they couldn't meditate this way. <coughs> and it's really true. So, the fact that your mind becomes distracted is not the problem. Your mind will begin to settle down after a period of time, on its own. Most of the time, my biggest problem with new students, especially if they've done meditation with somebody else, is to get them to stop trying so hard. You need to back off, not put more energy into it, you have a wandering thought, you don't try to make that wandering thought go away. You back off from that wandering thought and relax and smile and come back to your object of meditation. Anything you try to do is putting in too much energy, too much effort, and you're going to cause yourself headaches. So, don't do that. Okay? It doesn't matter how many times a thought arises. It can be the same thought or a different thought. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you do with that thought when it arises. When you recognize it, you release it, by not keeping your attention on it and relax, you have developed a pure mind. That's good. Why have you developed a pure mind? Because you've let go of craving. Your mind is clear, your mind is bright. Any time you try to push something or make something happen the way you want it to, guess who has craving in their mind at that time? Guess who is trying too hard? And guess who is causing themselves suffering? So, don't do that. It's that simple. Always back up, back off. If, if something keeps coming up over and over again, so what? 
Every time you let it be, you relax, you smile, you come back to your object of meditation, you are purifying your mind. And every time you purify your mind, that hindrance will get weaker and weaker until it finally disappears. And then all kinds of good stuff occurs. So after about 10 minutes, or when you're sitting in meditation, please sit with your back reasonably straight. You can lean in the chair, but don't over lean. Okay? After about 10 minutes, then you start sending loving and kind thoughts to a spiritual friend. A spiritual friend is someone of the same sex, and they are alive. A spiritual friend is someone that when you think of them and their good qualities, you sincerely do like them, and you sincerely do wish them well. That can't be understated. The sincerity of your wish helps your progress in the meditation. So if you really like that person, you really want to see them be happy, that will help your meditation a lot. <clears throat> now the thing that you must realize is that every wish for their happiness that you make, you need to feel that wish. You know what it feels like to be happy? Bring that feeling into your heart. Surround your friend with that feeling of happiness and give them a heart hug. You don't have to try to wish, oh, they're off in that direction. It doesn't matter. You put them in your heart and surround them with that feeling of love and kindness. And that will find them on its own. So, I want everyone to sit at least 30 minutes. And when your meditation is good, sit longer. Now there's, there's some meditators here that are advanced meditators and they'll, they'll sit for a long period of time. And that's good, but if you've never done it before, let it happen naturally by itself. Some, some sittings, you really feel like you're, it's a good meditation and you sit and it lasts for an hour. Good. The next time you come and sit, probably what's going to happen is you want that one hour sitting to come back again and you put in too much energy and too much effort and your mind starts to get restless and then you think, well, I'm not trying hard enough. And you put in more energy and you get more restlessness. And that is a major problem. And quite often people will come to me after the first or second day of the retreat and complain about how much restlessness they have what do I tell them? You're not smiling enough. You're trying too hard. You need to back off. Oh, did you want something to happen in a particular way? So, what you need to do is be patient, back off, and kind of chuckle with yourself a little bit. Laugh at yourself for trying to make something happen the way you want it to. 
When you do this, you will go from, I want this to be the way I want it, when I want it that way, to, oh, it's only this. It's only this desire. Who needs that? And your mind will settle down and then you'll be able to do the proper meditation again. Sometimes people will get caught in the idea of release and relax and release and relax and release and relax and they don't go back to their object to meditation. And as a result, they come to me and says, this meditation doesn't work. Well, yeah, it does when you do it right. You always have to come back to your object of meditation. Even when your object of meditation is during your daily activities, come back to your smile. So, sit as long as is comfortable. Some sittings are going to be very easy and very comfortable and you sit for an hour, hour and a half, something like that, and the next sitting is going to be 45 minutes. So what? It's okay. Not a problem. This is a natural unfolding. You don't have to push. You don't have to make it happen the way you want it to. Now, after you get up from your meditation, you'd want to do your walking meditation. Walking meditation means walking at a normal pace. Like you walk whenever you're doing your daily activities. Keep your eyes down a little bit so that you're not looking around. This is really beautiful around here, but you don't care about that right now. Just keep your eyes down. Stay with your spiritual friend. Radiate that feeling to your spiritual friend. If your mind gets distracted, fine. Use the six R's. Relax, smile, come back to your object of meditation again. Some people can actually go a lot deeper when they're doing the walking meditation than they can when they're sitting. That's fine, doesn't matter. Either way it works. Now, one of the things that you have to realize is that when a hindrance arises, it is there for a very specific reason. It is there to show you where your attachment is. What is attachment? I am that. It's the idea of a personal self. And every hindrance that arises has that in it. So when the hindrance arises, it is teaching you, and it is your teacher. It's teaching you where your attachment is and how to let go of that attachment. I'm not your teacher. I'm a guide. That's different. I keep you on the path. That's what I do. But you are teaching yourself. So it's real important that you understand that you're responsible for your own suffering and you can be responsible for your own happiness too. If you have a hindrance that arises and it really bugs you a lot and it keeps coming back over and over again, that makes me happy. Isn't that odd? Why? Because I know you're really working. 
you come to me with all of this, oh, it's so nice and I'm so peaceful and I'm so happy. It's I kind of, okay, continue. So it, the hindrances are a necessary part of the practice. And it's very necessary for you to understand that this is where something happened in the past and you took it personally and then you stuffed it and tried to forget it. But the nature of this kind of meditation is it brings these kind of things back up so that you can let them go without having them come back. That's the whole point of the meditation. One of the points of meditation, I should say. <clears throat> we are made up of five things. The psychophysical process is made up of a body, feeling. Now, feeling is not emotion. Feeling is feeling. It's either pleasant feeling or a painful feeling or neither painful nor pleasant. Doesn't have anything to do with emotion. There's perception. Perception is a part of the mind that names things. You look at this and you say, this is a cup. Perception is a part of the mind that put that name on it. And it has memory in it. You have thoughts, you have consciousness. When a painful feeling arises, the first thing we try to do is think the feeling away. But feelings are one thing, thoughts are something else. They never meet. And the more you try to think it away, the more you suffer. And the more pain you cause yourself because I don't like that. I want it to be different than it is. The first thing you have to do is let go of the thought and relax. Let's say you're sitting in meditation. When you sit in meditation for a period of time, you can have pains arise in your body. It's normal. And the first thing your mind does is begin to think about how I don't like that. I wish it would stop. I wish it would go away. Every thought about that pain makes the pain bigger and more intense. So, what to do? Let go of the thoughts about it. Relax. There is a tight mental fist wrapped around that pain, that sensation in the body. That tight mental fist is, I don't like that. It is craving and clinging. So the, what you have to do is realize that when pain arises in your body, that's the truth. It's there. When pain is there, it's there. And it's okay for that pain to be there. What you have to do is allow the space for that pain to be there. Relax into that. Doesn't mean it's going to go away right away. Probably it won't. But it's okay for that pain to be there. It has to be okay. Because that's the truth. Anytime you try to fight with the truth, anytime you try to control the truth, anytime you try to get involved with changing the truth, that is a cause of suffering. 
So don't do that. You've been hearing me say that a lot, haven't you? Don't cause yourself pain. Don't cause yourself undue suffering. Because this doesn't meet my idea of the way I want to be. You can't fight with the truth. All you can do is allow the truth and back off and let it be there by itself. Sometimes the pain will go away by itself, sometimes it won't. It doesn't matter. You don't keep your attention on the pain. If you put your attention in the middle of that pain, you know what happens? It gets bigger and more intense. You don't need to do that to yourself. Allow the space for that pain to be there. Relax the tightness caused in your head from this sensation. Smile. Come back to your object of meditation. Your mind might probably will go back to that again. Fine. Do the whole thing over again. Relax your thoughts. Let go of that tight mental fist around the pain. Relax. Smile. Come back to your object of meditation. <clears throat> Every time you do that, it improves your mindfulness. Mindfulness is remembering to observe how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. This is important. There are probably 50 different definitions of mindfulness. But this is the closest one to what it actually is that I've run across. And if you can find one, a definition that's better, please let me know. So, allowing the space and observing without getting involved with it without trying to control it, without trying to make it be something other than it is. That's what the meditation teaches you. And as you go deeper in your meditation, you will begin to get some of the little benefits of doing the meditation. You'll get joy and happiness and things like that. Now, I teach a kind of meditation that is called jhana, but it's not just jhana. It's jhana and insight, or vipassana. These two things are yoked together. You can't have one without the other. Which is a lot different than um, an awful lot of people teach. So this is kind of a unique kind of meditation because you are adding that relax step with every distraction. If you don't relax you're going to continually have thoughts popping up, causing problems, causing hindrances, causing you to get involved with not liking it and wanting it to go away and trying to force it away. And then you say, well, this doesn't work, I'm going to go home. This does work when you do it correctly. An awful lot of people have gained an awful lot of benefit from doing this meditation. And it's not something that you only do while you're taking a retreat. This is something you can carry with you all day. 
Now, one of the things that I am going to insist on is everybody must smile. Not a lot, or not a little, but a lot. Excuse me. <laughs> Why do you need to smile? How does your mind feel when you smile? Light. Very clear. That's the meditative mind. When you try too hard, you get too serious, that's what happens to your mind. You have to keep your mind light. Oh, I just got through teaching some people in Ecuador that had been practicing with Goenka for 20 years and they were teachers and their minds were so heavy because they were told that you had to put in a lot of effort, a lot of energy. And it took me almost two weeks to get them so that they could lighten their mind. The light mind is the alert mind. So the more you smile, the better your mindfulness becomes. That's a promise. Now I was talking about the walking meditation. <coughs> it's good to pick a place where you can walk without being in the sun. But just walk back and forth, maybe, oh, 40 or 50 feet. Don't be walking around enjoying looking at other things because that gets in the way of your practice. Stay with your spiritual friend. When your mind gets distracted, six are that, come back to your spiritual friend. The walking at first can be quite difficult, but there will be a time when it actually gets a lot easier. Why is it difficult? Because you're used to walking around letting your mind do this and that. Think about this, think about that. You're not paying attention to what your mind is doing. Now you're starting to learn how to discipline mind. It doesn't like that idea. It's going to throw up all kinds of different stuff at you. Oh, this is important. I got to think about this now. Now, there's nothing important. So always come back to your object of meditation with a smile and a light mind. If you do that, you will progress very quickly, I promise. Okay, have I forgotten anything? Spiritual friend can't use family Oh, right. Don't use a family member as your spiritual friend. Why? Family members have a tendency to do things that make you unhappy sometimes. And then you start thinking about that and you're sending loving hatred instead of loving kindness. So pick someone else that you respect very much and you sincerely do wish them happiness. It can be a monk that you know, it can be a friend, I don't care. But it has to be sincere and you have to feel the wish Sometimes if your mind is a little bit active, you can change your wish to being peaceful and calm and feeling that peace and calm and radiate that to your spiritual friend. Sometimes it's joy. You pick what you want to feel and what you want to send. Just make it wholesome. Okay?
Anybody have any questions? Yes. How do I send the heavens to myself? Feel myself a whole body? Put yourself in, right in your heart. Radiate yes. that feeling to yourself. Heart? You mean physical heart? Yes. Oh. So how, how about the, the respected friend? Put them in your heart. Radiate loving kindness to them. Oh, both. Both. Myself putting them. Here. Right. Not whole body. It will be your whole body. You image yourself being here, and it's going to be your whole body. So my image putting here. Yes. My That's image. right. And your spiritual friend. Do you think your spiritual friend would fit in your heart? No, it's the image of your friend. It's the thought of your friend that you're putting in your heart and radiating that loving kindness. Okay? You mean, uh, question is that, I, I send the happiness to here and radiate yes. the happiness from the heart. Yes. From the heart, I send out right. the happiness. Also, At by first. Direction, by two directions. One direction is... Uh, Send to, to the heart, another direction. Send, send <coughs> Just let it radiate by itself. You don't have to direct it. Just radiate the loving kindness, it will go with where it's supposed to go by itself. I don't need, need, need to radiate. You. <sighs> okay, pretend that you are a candle. And you get the feeling of the loving kindness, and you are a candle. And then the radiation means a candle doesn't push light into the room, right? If you put a candle on top of this piano in the dark, the radiate the light, it just comes out, right? Mm -hmm. You become the loving kindness. You become the candle. And then it just comes off of you. First, it washes over you. And you keep smiling for, for 10 minutes, and when it's really warm, you take your friend, you put him in there, and then it, you just imagine that it's radiating out to your friend. You see it going to your friend in your mind, and it just goes, just the way the light comes off the candle. You don't do anything, you don't send it, you don't push it, you don't make it. You just are this light, and it's gone. Okay. okay, how would you catch it? Hmm? First one, for example, I sent the happiness to the myself image here. You get the feeling in your heart and then let it wash all over you. So all through you. So from you. So okay, sorry, I'm the, the new one. I'm the first day to do it. Yeah. So I, I needed to understand the the, the process. First one, I sent the hap uh, happiness to to the image in to me heart. to I myself to me, to me yeah, the, my, my image in the heart right myself then I feel so the candle from my heart and spoil out all the light everything really from my heart and it get out of the, my body right from my body after ten and uh, after ten minutes keep going, keep going. Okay. then after ten minutes then I change the, the image. You, yeah. May yeah. you be peaceful, may your mind be calm. Wish it goes for myself. Right? No. For yourself first, now you're finished. Right. Then for them. So for them, then the, the, the image is still not outside my mind, so not from the mind, from my mind, so in the heart. Where's your friend in China? You can send it to them in China. Send it anywhere in the world. Yeah, no, no, I mean, right now, it's just more like, like close Hold to them exactly. in your heart in and heart. radiate loving kindness to them. Oh. Radiate that happy feeling and feel that happiness. Mm -hmm. right. so Enough. So, my friends, I said, I just, I just, my mind just sent the happiness to my, the image of my heart. Then, my heart, my friends, image one. Like a candle, is blow out everything and the same to hold my body. No. This is complicated. You're making it too hard. Listen again. Okay. You get the feeling of the loving kindness from the happy feeling of the memory. You put the feeling in your heart. Right? Now, 
You take that feeling and you're going to let the love, may I be happy, may I be peaceful, may my mind be calm. But feel that wish, feel whatever wish, wish you, you feel make. Feel the wish uh -huh. from the memory of when you were happy. Uh -huh. yeah. And then let it wash over you. And do that with your spiritual friend. That's enough. Right. Then you take the friend. No, that's enough. That's right. That's enough. Okay. Do it, do it tonight. We'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> okay. okay. So I talk with you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If you can change the wish as long as you change the feeling. Okay? Whatever wish you want to make, you have to feel that wish. There are sometimes people ask me to send loving kindness to someone that is very confused or they have a lot of problems. So what I do is I start radiating a clear, composed mind. And I feel that. And I radiate that feeling towards, in, in my heart, towards that person. They benefit from it. So it, it's pretty much up to you what wish you make, as long as it's wholesome and you feel that wish. Yeah, you don't you don't do the same wish over and over and over and over and over again. Because that turns into a mantra. And what happens is you start just repeating that word in your mind while you start thinking about other things. Doesn't work. You're not feeling the wish. So it's real important that you feel the wish and keep that feeling going. <clears throat> Monte, is it important that the friend be the same friend every day? Yes. Thank you. Until I tell you to change. And that will happen. You just have to get to a certain place in your meditation. Anybody else? So, we're going to do that right now. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we've thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas, a mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddhist dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.